Welcome back to the Dob Father. Before we begin this episode, I want to address some salacious rumours that are circulating that I'm somehow feeling the pressure ahead of our first competitive game in charge of NK Dob. Just because our manager avatar seems to be progressively wetting himself as he rocks back and forth doesn't mean that I'm also feeling the heat. So the fixture list has given us a tricky away tie for our first competitive game in charge of NK Dob. What we're going to do in today's episode is familiarise you with all things Slovenian football ahead of the kickoff of the new season. And we're going to start with the town that we hail from. So here we are in the village of Dob. It doesn't look like the setting that you'd expect to see future European champions coming from. In fact, Dob is home to just 1,638 residents. Here you can see the village of Dob nestled on the outskirts of the town of Domžala. And it's not as if Domžala itself is a sprawling metropolis with a population of just over 13,000. And so here we are as the newly installed boss of a village side of fewer than 2,000 inhabitants trying to mix it with the big boys of Slovenian football. Now whilst we're slumming it in the second tier, all of the big boys are playing in the Perva Liga, the 36th best league in all of Europe. Here you'll find the big club from the capital Olympia, where international stars such as goalkeeper Jan Oblak first plied their trade. Their fierce rivals are NK Maribor, a Slovenian side that have made it to the group stages of European competition. And you'll also find our local rivals, NK Domžala. Domžala have two league wins and this is the level that we aspire to. But first, we've got to get out of the second tier. Now remember, we're going to try and achieve that solely relying on players we produce in our own youth academy and we're playing attributeless in this save so we can't see how good those young prospects are going to be however the rivalry that we have with Domžala is not too fierce because they do kindly have us as an affiliate club and that means that our youth players are able to share their training facilities now that's going to be good for us in the production of our young talents because although our own facilities are not that great with below average training facilities, meaning that once players arrive, it's going to be difficult for us to develop them, we should have some reasonable young talents coming through as we have great youth facilities, courtesy of the club down the road, as well as good academy coaching an excellent youth recruitment too. However, those facilities are not helping our media prediction. We were 12th when we took over, but now the press are forecasting a 14th place finish. However, now that we've played through pre-season, a couple of bits of good news have presented themselves. And the first is that the press are predicting that we might have a goal scorer in our ranks, as Simon Gregorin is the third favourite to be the top scorer in the division. And the other good news is that when you scroll through the media's key players from the second tier in Slovenian football, we've got two that make it. You do have to scroll a little way down to find them but both Christian Schiepek and a player we've not introduced you to, Giga Avbelge, are both ranked above some of the best players in the division. Now, the problem with young Giga is that he's a centre-half who's five foot four inches tall, so we're trying to recreate him as a central midfielder, but it looks like he's a player of some promise. So here's our pre-season form ahead of that opening fixture, and amongst these games, some of them have just been to get our fitness up, but four of them have been to test us and see what kind of level we're at. You saw one of those games in the last episode when we drew 2-2 with top division Garicha and we played another side from the division above in our next game and we went down 3-1 in this fixture and didn't look great. We played much better against German side Unterhaching where we lost 3-2 but we showed a lot of promise and I think our best performance of pre-season was in one of our final warm-up games when we played a team from our division who were relegated from the top flight last season and our second favourites to go straight back up this. And we blew them away going into a three-goal lead inside the first half, eventually running out 3-1 winners in a pretty good performance. The opening goal was scored by that man Gregor in. And after that audacious flicked goal, we scored another as Kajniks ran through. And we were 3-0 up before half-time as Timmy Zidane fed in Sheepek and he managed to slot past the keeper. So we've had a decent pre-season. We're not getting carried away, though. We have to be realistic. We're predicted to finish way down the league, so our players are not as strong as many of the others in the division, and we can't even see how good they are. If you have a look at the pre-season odds of the two clubs promoted to this division, 
They're both tipped to finish more highly than us. And ahead of them, it looks like there are some big clubs in this league that we're going to have to be competing with. But in order to compete, we have made a couple of little tweaks to our tactic. And here are those changes in question. First of all, to the personnel. In our last episode, we introduced you to 40-year-old Clement Kunstel, who's the only player in our squad with a player trait. He's also the only man with a half-decent personality, so he's in charge of our mentoring group. I'd like to keep him into his 41st year if possible, but he's refusing to sign a contract. I'd like to keep him around just to mentor the youngsters we're going to have coming through. Seeing as he might not be here next season, I've instead decided to try and develop the player we bought you earlier, Giga Alf Belge. He's going to be a little vulnerable in the air at just five foot four inches, but there are a couple of decent elements to his game. The coaches say he's a good tackler and they like his timing in the challenge. He's also fairly pacey and enjoys the big matches. Strength, stamina, jumping reach are all big red flags with him. We'll have to see how he gets on. The other change we've made is to our shape a little and where our front three are playing. We were playing wingers on attack when we saw you last. We've tweaked that a little over a couple of our recent games in order to give the wingbacks a little bit more space to overlap and bomb on. So we've now got an inside forward on support and an inverted winger on attack. And we've changed who is playing where. Soon as Simon Gregorin started banging in the goals and we got the message to say his third favourite to be the top scorer in the league, we've changed him to being the front man in our three. Now he's pacey and it says he can dribble. So we've asked him to run with the ball more and he's been great in the last two games since he switched up front. So he's going to be our main goal threat. It means that the man that was up front, Sheepek, is going to move out onto the right. He's a natural left footer, so he can cut in. And hopefully, as well as scoring some goals, he'll be quite creative as well. As I think the coach report says, his passing is pretty decent. And then we've got Gaic, who we're going to play as an inverted winger. His coach report says he's quick and he's a good crosser. So even though he's going to be cutting in, we've asked him to play more crosses for those times when he either does go down the line or whether he jinks back inside and might be able to curl a ball in to maybe somebody coming in at the far post. So this is going to be the team they are going to represent us in our first game in charge. We're going to show you a scout report on our opponents who have a notable former player. Today, we'll be traveling to Kursko, over towards the Croatian border, and we'll be taking on a club that are in their 100th year and have produced Benjamin Seško, one of the most talented players to come out of Slovenia in recent years. We're going to be playing in the intimidating Stadia Mate Guča. Kursko are 20-1 to 1 shots to win the league this season, and we'll have to be wary of their star man, Grant Sejalomba Shimba. Dobber dreaming of a winning start as they take on Krushko in their opening game. Here we go then, everybody. I will admit I am a little bit apprehensive. I don't really know how good any of these players are and whether they will stand up to the test of competitive fixtures. In pre-season, we looked okay. Let's see if we can carry that into today's game. It looks like we're going to be in our away kit of yellow with blue trim. And as we begin our first game of the season, also let us know down in the comments, who have you decided to go for in your maiden FM23 adventure? Are you starting out in the lower leagues or are you taking charge of a bigger club? And which side have you gone for and what country are they in? And what attracted you to that league? We are into the 12th minute of our game and our opponents in the green are coming forward. It looks like they've got the ref involved, but we've robbed them in midfield as we are trying to do with our press. And Gregorin has a sighter from distance, but he's fired it over the bar. 25 minutes in, we've made an encouraging start. We've had three shots, only one's hit the target, but we've restricted our opponents to no efforts on goal so far as we move into another passage of play. Little Timmy Zidane plays the ball to Dachman. By the way, I'm going to need your help watching our players in action and reporting back on who you think our good players are and what people's weaknesses are. One thing I've noticed in pre-season is that our centre-halves are playing long far too often for my liking. 
I don't know whether to change them to maybe having short passing or even ball playing defenders. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments as we look to try and counter now. Shepek needs to work the ball onto his left foot and he has. He's shoveled it to the box-to-box -box midfielder Kashnic and now to Chigler who had an injury in the week but he's made it for today's game. He feeds Gregorin and our striker has another effort on goal. It's gone behind for a corner. We scored a couple of set plays during pre-season although we're not great at them as Datchman rises at the near post and heads over. Making our way towards half-time, it's now our opponents that have got a corner. They've still not registered an effort on target. Wouldn't you bet that they were going to take the lead with their first shot on goal? Here they come, working the ball down our left. They've got a free man on the edge of the box. We've closed him down now, and we've forced them into shooting from distance. It was good pressure on the ball, I think, and they fired that one over. We've had five shots, one on target, an XG of 0.56 now, and we've got a set play just before the break. We're going to pick it up through the diminutive little midfielder, Av Belge, and he's played it back to Zidane. He's now looking for options on the ball. He doesn't have one. He's gone all the way back to the goalkeeper, our only goalkeeper, by the way. So tell me down in the comments that he looks like the best man between the sticks that you've ever seen. Shipek looking to try and get us into the lead. You can see how we've opened up more space for the fullbacks now as Zidane rampages down the flank, delivers into the box. We've had our sixth effort of the game, but haven't been able to find a breakthrough. A decent first half. This feels like a winnable game, but we need to find a goal. Our opponents are coming forward again. They're certainly looking more likely in the second half than they did in the first, can we win the ball back and somehow try to force a counter-attack that might put them under pressure? We haven't, and they've had a very cute effort that's looped over our keeper. Unfortunately, it's also looped over the bar, but they are definitely getting back into the game. Shepek is now down to a 6.3. I think we need to make some changes. And we've made two. Tristan Kegler had a knock going into this game. He's pulled out a 6.4, so we've taken him off. And Christian Shepek had dropped to a 6.2. So in his place, we're bringing on Dino Zenkovic, who is also left-footed, so should be able to cut in from that wing. Scored a few goals, actually, coming off the bench during pre-season. So let's see whether he can be the man that could fire us to an opening day victory. I would take a draw, but nil-nil. A little bit dull for the YouTube cameras. And we've not had an effort during this second half. So what I think I might do is maybe switch our tactic up. This is going to be our main shape for this season, but I've designed two variants of it. One, when we're looking to try and hold on to the lead a little bit. It's exactly the same shape, but I've changed some of the team instructions and some of the player roles, as I have for one where we're chasing the game a little and I feel like since halftime, we've dozed off and we're waiting to just concede a late goal against our opponents. So let's try and mix things up. Gregorin has been playing terribly this game. So we're going to take him off as well. And we're going to bring our young on loan striker, Gaspar Scherner, who's only 18. The coaches think he's a pretty quick option up there. So let's see whether he can bring in a little bit of pace to this poaching role we're going to ask him to play. And we've got 14 minutes to try and at least test their goalkeeper. They've had four shots now. Still, our keeper has not made a save, but we've not had an effort since the halftime whistle blew. We're in 87 minutes now. It would be an ideal time to score a goal. Let's see what we can do. Is Datchman going to go long? He hasn't. He's played the ball into midfield. This is how I'd like to build up the play. We've now looked for the width. I think he's gone for the wrong wing. And we're having to try and win the ball back again. We've done it. We've got Kashnic. He's gone over the top. And his Sylvester Stallone move was in vain as their goalkeeper claims the ball. Is he going to launch a long one? Because we are vulnerable to that ball over the top. We've won it. Mitrovic has won it. But in midfield, we're giving the ball away again. Now we've won it. Here is the young substitute. Is he going to feed a teammate? He hasn't. He's been tackled. We've still got the ball with Gaic. He dinks inside. And the other substitute, Dino Zenkovic, has a popped up in the 89th minute of the game. He's tapped it into an empty net. And we got a little bit fortunate. We were tackled once. 
I think we might have been tackled a second time before we stroll the ball across the box. And Zenkovic taps into an empty net. Let's pause the game. We're going to pull out the holds tactic to finish it off. So having chased the game to try and score that goal, now we're just going to sit back. We're going to go defensive with some lower lines, some lower tempo, and some positions that are a little bit less attacking in their outlook. And we've got, what, 90 seconds plus stoppage time to try and see this game out. I think we may have given away a corner. We've given away a few set pieces during this game, and I don't like it because our centre-halves are the only two players that are really decent in the air. To give them their credit, the corners so far, they have been able to head clear, but our opponents have got space on the edge of our box, and they've gone over in the area. They were claiming a penalty. The referee was not having any of it, but with three minutes of stoppage time, this looks like another full highlight as well. They've got the ball in their own half, and they're looking to try and equalise. We need to try and rob them and move the ball upfield and keep possession. It's a good tackle from the box-to-box -box midfielder. He's thumped it long. There's nobody there, son. It's going to come straight back at us. And oh, we relied on our keeper. He got a feather-light touch on the ball and sends it behind for a corner. 50 seconds to see out. Another set piece comes into our box. The youngster has managed to win the ball back there and he's just going to run into the corner, son. Take it into the corner. Get bought down. A throw-in will do. We've got 30 seconds left to see out. It's a tense one. It's a nervy one. Could we get an opening day 1-0 victory? You can see the boys are playing for time perfectly. Just trying to hold on to this lead. Makovic is going to hold that ball till the ref books him. He's not interested in throwing him. We're now over the allotted time. The ref has got to be having a word with him here. He's glitched. He's thrown it. The ref has blown his whistle. And we have got an opening day victory. Granted, very early in the season, but we're one of just five sides that have won their opening day fixture. I will take it. Let me know down in the comments whether any players impressed or appalled during that game, as I'm constantly appreciative of your scouting eye on our performances. And if you're interested in learning more about Slovenian football, well, we're going to pop a video up in the corner that you could check out next.